Hi everyone, Angela here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a two layer waist and back warmer out of stretchy fabric. You can wear it under or on top of your clothing. I'm also going to show you how to make one that's reversible out of two different colors. For the length of the warmer, you need to decide how high you want it above the waistline. I'm making mine four inches and then how far below the waistline. I'm making mine five, making this a total of nine inches long. Of course, you can make this any length you like. It'll just scrunch up a bit when you have it on. First, measure around your under bust or chest. Then measure around your waist. Then around the high hip where the bottom of the warmer will sit. To make the pattern, I'm using a large piece of paper, folding it down from the top, making a crease in the center, and then folding it from the left to the right and making a crease down that side. From the top left corner, measure down the total length of your warmer. Mine was nine inches. And then mark down another inch below that for your hem. So now I have a total of 10 inches. So I'm gonna go across and marking down from the top again. I'm marking 10 inches down. And then I'm joining those two marks with a straight line across. On the top fold, mark across from the left hand corner your underbuster chest measurement divided by four. Then subtract half an inch and make a mark to the left of it. On the bottom line, measure across from the fold your hip measurement divided by four less half an inch and make a mark. From the top left corner, measure down the length of your warmer to your waist. From there, measure across and mark your waist measurement divided by four less half an inch. From the bottom mark, draw a line two inches straight up. And from the top mark, draw a line an inch and a half down. Now join the ends of those lines to your waist mark and then curve out all three corners. Then use an X-Acto knife or paper scissors to cut out your pattern. Then on the two top right folds, cut out tiny notches. Open up the other side of your pattern, and that top fold is the top of your warmer. Open up your pattern completely, draw a grain line down that center crease, and your pattern is complete. I have some stretchy polyester and lycra fabric with right sides together. Then place your pattern piece down, making sure that your grain line is parallel to your selvage edge. Now pin all around the pattern through all the layers. I always place my pins on an angle. It's much easier to do and doesn't affect the pattern when you're cutting it out. Now cut out using a rotary knife or a pair of scissors. I'm using my Olfa Deluxe Handle Rotary Cutter and also my 10 inch Kai Professional Series Micro Serrated Shears. You can find the links for these in the description below. Now cut your tiny notches on both sides of the center fold. Remove all the pins and the pattern, and where you've cut those notches, place a pin through both layers of the fabric on each side. Because it's hard to see on black fabric, I'm just gonna chalk the wrong side so that you can see what I'm doing. Now grab the top edges and fold the fabric in half so that all the edges match along the bottom. With all the side edges even, pin through all the layers or use fabric clips. Next, we need to sew both side seams through all the layers. Now, before you start stitching, it's really important to check that those top two folds at the notches are perfectly even. Now, using a quarter inch seam allowance, you can use a stretch stitch or a very narrow zigzag. I'm using my four thread overlocker, and when I stitch, I'm just gonna cut away a tiny bit of the fabric to make sure that I'm catching all the layers. When you finish your stitching, trim off the threads at the bottom and leave about half an inch at the top. And now repeat for the other side. So what we have here now are all the layers stitched together. Just take one of the layers and turn the fabric right side out. 
By stitching it this way, you can see that the side seams are sandwiched together. So this creates a nice neat two layer tube with a clean top edge. Now depending on your fabric, it's at this point you want to try it on to see if you need to make this any tighter. To sew the hem, we're going to fold both of the layers together and treat it as one. You can finish the hem with a zigzag or stretch stitch, but I'm going to use a cover stitch. To make it a little easier for you to see, I'm going to chalk a one inch hemline all around the bottom. Now you can leave the top as it is, but I'm going to top stitch it to match the bottom so that the fold stays even and doesn't slip around. To do a cover stitch, I turn both layers of the hem along the chalk line and place it under the machine with the right side up. I'm adjusting my hem guide and then I'm going to stitch right around that bottom hem. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe and leave a comment below. And now repeat all along that top fold. A little trick to finish off the cover stitching is to pull through all of the threads to the back and then tie off in a double knot. There's less chance of it unraveling this way. To make the reversible waist warmer, I'm using a lightweight stretchy velour cord fabric in pink for one side and blue for the other side. With both fabrics right sides together and stacked evenly, place the pattern down folded in half along the top edge of the waist warmer. Make sure your pattern is parallel to and not on any of the selvage edges. Next pin all around and then cut out with your scissors or rotary cutter. Remove your pins and then separate each color, keeping right sides together. Our next step is to stitch together all the side seams, but before we do that, we'll just mark out about a two inch opening near the bottom of just one side. First, I'm gonna stitch both sides of this pink color. And then for the blue, stitch one side completely. And then for the other, we just need to keep the fabric between the pins unstitched. Turn the piece with the opening to the right side and then place it between the other piece so that the top edges are together. Match your side seams and have it facing in the same direction towards you Hold it in place with the fabric clip or pin and repeat for the other side seam. And then if you need to, pin or clip the top edges together before sewing it all around. Stitch together, keeping your edges even all around. If you're using a serger or overlocker, make sure your stitching has created a nice straight seam at the end. Now we have the top edge sewn together, we don't do the same thing with the bottom edge. We need to separate the pieces now, shake it out and lay it flat with the wrong side facing you. Fold your fabric and match the bottom edges together and then turn your fabric around so that the edges are on the right hand side. Move the top piece out of the way and then roll the two center pieces together nice and skinny. This is called the burrito method. Check which direction the seams are facing at the top and then pin the seams together at the bottom facing the same way. If you need to, pin or clip all around the bottom edge keeping the inner layers out of your way. Start your stitching with the seam that has the opening facing you. Make sure to match all your edges and that you're not catching any of the other layers. 
So now that the bottom is sewn, you can see that what you have is a double layer tube with a color on each side. Because there isn't any top stitching at the top or bottom, we're going to need to connect the side seams together. Stretch out the top seam to find the center and then match the edges of your side seams. If you need to, hold the edges together with clips or pins. To join these side seams together, you don't need to stitch right on the very edge of your stitching. You can stitch in the middle of your seam. And you can start and stop your stitching about an inch from the top and bottom edges. Remember not to stitch between the opening. Then stitch your other side together. Now go in through that little opening and turn it right side out. By connecting the side seams together, the fabric doesn't shift. Now we just have to close that little opening, turn the seam allowances in and pin it in place and then slip stitch it by hand to close it. You could stitch this closed by machine, but it really won't look very nice on stretch fabric, especially if you're wearing this as a reversible item. Center the seams on the bottom and top edges and give this a nice press. And there you have it, a reversible waist warmer without any top stitching. Wear it smooth on either side, wear it with the top folded down, or you can wear it ruched or gathered up. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on all of your notifications. Until next time, happy sewing.